to Wildwood Cottage and welcome back to my diary. Um, this is my diary about my life here in my cottage in Wales and uh, I want to share with you hints and tips on how to save money and uh, things that are going on in the garden, things with the chickens and just general day-to-day -day busyness that I get on with around my home. Thank you to all my new subscribers, to all you people who have come along um, and supported my channel. It's lovely to have you here. It's been great to see the growth that's been happening with my little fledgling nook over the last few weeks. Uh, we seem to be growing in subscribers every day, so that's really good. So thank you very much for tuning in and seeing what I'm getting up to. Thank you as well for all your lovely comments that you leave in the uh, description box below, in the comments section below the videos. I do love talking to everybody and uh, it's lovely to see where you're all from. There's people from Australia, America, um, I speak to somebody in Hungary. So yeah, there's people from all over the place, Lancashire in the UK, um, Cumbria. So yeah, it's lovely to see where everybody is from. So do leave a uh, comment in the comment section below, below the videos. Let me know what you're thinking, um, if there's anything that you would like me to cover in my videos. Um, and just generally have a chat and let's see where you're from and say hello. So that all said, I just thought today I'd come in and say hello. I've been posting videos that I had pre-recorded on my laptop because last week I was suffering with a really bad migraine and uh, it lasted for three days so I didn't really fancy doing much on the video front. So I've been posting videos and editing things that I've had on my computer for, well, for a few weeks. So I'm up to date now I think with all my videos. I've just got one more to put up and that was a video that I did manage to get done early last week. Um, showing you a little bit of what I've been doing in the garden. So that'll be going up this week for you to have a look at, probably Thursday. But uh, I just thought I'd come and sit by the fire. The sun is out, it's a beautiful day out there. But um, yeah, it's been frosty overnight. We had a really hard frost last night. So it's probably gone down to about minus four, fat minus five last night. So it's been really cold here this morning. So. I decided to sweep the flue on this and you know it was really really easy it took me about five or ten minutes to do it thankfully this pipe is really easy to access it's straight up and down not like the one in the other room that sort of goes on a slant and then goes up um, and that little slanty bit always gets really full of soot so that needs doing two, at least twice during the burn season that's the one in the sitting room but this one today, I tell you, even though not much soot came out of it, I've given it all a really good clean inside, um, around the oven and around the firebox and underneath at the bottom here, down the bottom there. And it was so easy to clean. I could get in with a piece of cardboard and scoop out all the muck. And uh, it's burning really, really well this morning. It lit first time. It's gone really hot straight away. And uh, I think my lesson learned is make sure I keep it clean um, and I think it's going to be more efficient that way. So I note to anyone who's got a log burner, don't be lazy in sweeping it. Buy yourself a set of brushes um, and a set of poles. It takes you five minutes with an ordinary household drill. It's got a little attachment on the end and uh, you attach it to your drill. You can sweep it yourself. It takes you about 10 minutes and uh, save you about 100 quid, 200 quid on having someone come out and sweep it for you. And once you've bought the brushes, I got mine on eBay and they were about £25. And I got seven poles with it. And um, yeah, I can get seven, just over seven or eight metres up my chimney. My chimney stack is a high stack. It's about a 12 metre ladder to get up to the top of my chimney. Uh, that's why we needed scaffolding when we had the flue liner fitted. And uh, yeah, I can do most of the chimney with the brushes. I'm going to buy another set at some point, but they're about £20 because I have to buy a whole new set. Um, so I will do that at some point. But for what I need it for, my brushes are fine. Uh, but yeah, invest in a set of brushes, about £20 on eBay. It attaches to your drill. As long as your drill has got a hammer function on the drill, um, you don't need that. But that just means it'll be powerful enough and you won't burn out the motor and uh, you can clean it yourself so as I say it took me about 10 minutes this morning the uh, builders have put a little sort of window in the pipe so I just undo the bolts put the pole up and uh, it was really easy to do and this pretty stove 
it's just got so many little nooks and crannies that you really need to make sure are clean otherwise I've noticed just from lighting the fire this morning that it's burning so much more efficiently from doing that so I'm going to use a feather duster to get down the sides and uh, then I just brush it all together into a pile and scoop it out and the fire's nice and clean so 10 minutes work and the fire's working great so I just thought I'd like to share that little ditty with you so if you have got a log burner, just make sure you keep on top of keeping it swept and it'll burn so much more efficiently. Um, we've only used the fire in the other room about 10 times, not even that many, since I um, lit the first fire in October. I think we've had it on about 10 or 12 times, not a lot at all. And it's been swept once this year and once before we started using it again. So I don't think that's going to need doing until the end of spring when we turn the fire off and we stop lighting it. So that's really good. Um, also make sure your wood's dry when you put it in because uh, the moisture build up does mean it takes longer for the fire to warm up. Because you're burning the moisture in the wood before you actually get to burn the wood. So always make sure that your wood is well seasoned. Um, I made that mistake as well and you always know when the wood's got a bit of moisture in it because the glass as you can see you can see my fire today the glass was rotten and I think that's because I've been burning wood with a bit of moisture in it and uh, it makes the glass dirty because if the fire's wood's clean and it's not got moisture in it your glass should stay clean so that's usually a good marker as to whether your um, wood is dry or not so just a little insert there for anyone who may have a log burner just things i've learned with this pretty stove i may do a video covering that at some point once we come to the end of the burning season of what my review is of this pretty stove so far i've got no complaints with it at all whatsoever it's fabulous absolutely fabulous and i think it is saving us money even though the energy prices are going to change in july i do see this saving me a large amount of money and uh, I just need to make sure I get into a routine of lighting it when I get up because when I don't that's then when we start using the electric to boil the kettle to cook things on the stove to use the oven but if this is on from when I get up in the morning from first thing in the morning it's great we don't use the electric at all apart from lights so yeah even to boil the water for washing the dishes I don't use the dishwasher anymore I'm going to try and use it once a month to clean out the sump but other than that, I've used it once since Christmas, I think. And even Christmas when my family came, I did the dishes by hand. So, yeah. So, just a few little things, just if you are considering buying one, um, consider buying one with um, an oven. Because the oven is invaluable. I can cook um, a slow cooker meal in that from first thing in the morning. And then it's ready by the time we want our tea. So... Anything you would use a slow cooker for, you can do on this. Anything you would do on a Rayburn, you can do on this or an Arga. Um, yesterday, what did I do? I did baked potatoes on Saturday. I put them in about 2 o'clock in the afternoon and they needed finishing off for about a further 15 minutes in my air fryer. But if I put them in and let the fire earlier in the day, they would have been ready for tea time. So, yeah, the oven is great. So if you have got a log burner already... Maybe consider swapping it for um, one with an oven. You can get them that are stacked on top of each other with the fire at the bottom and the oven on the top and then the pipe comes out. Um, so if you've got a log burner already set on the outside of your fireplace, you could go for that option. And um, I think I've seen them for about £400 on the internet if you buy them on eBay or Amazon. Um, we got this one off a company that's now lo no longer on the internet. We were one of the last people to buy off them. Um, and we got it for a really, really good price. It went up to over £1,000 the week after we bought it. So we got a really good price on, on it, really. Um, and it's definitely been worth the money. Um, you can also get smaller ones than this. So if you have a fireplace you want to open up and put a log burner in, you can get smaller ones than this with a smaller oven. Um, but you can get them with the oven option and to be honest with you I think it gives out more heat doing it that way this is a 15 kilowatt stove but you can get them from a four and a half upwards but uh, the reason I got this is because I wanted to use it for cooking and um, this wasn't what I came on to talk about by the way but I may as well share it um, yeah I've lost my train of thought now the oven was what I wanted it for 
I wanted the heat but I wanted the oven and I got the biggest wattage we could afford so I could use the oven and I measured the oven before we ordered it to check it with the size of my standard oven that I've got and it's probably about three quarters of the size of my standard oven so I can cook a turkey in this if I wanted to um, it's big enough the, the only problem I do have with it is there's no shelf so I need to find an option of having a shelf in there so I can cook layers um, I did the apple crumble in it last week we had visitors last week and I cooked an apple crumble in there so that was really good um, took about an hour I think and the top did brown and it did cook all the way through so that was really good um, so even if you think about just an hour's worth of energy from your electric um, it's definitely going to save you money in the long run it's like solar panels when people invest in them and um, it says that over so long it's going to pay you back I think this has paid us back already with the amount of cooking I've done on it with the wood that we managed to get off the farmer I mean that's the only downside is the amount of wood you have to use but um, yeah I mean if you've got wood which you can get locally for free or on your land that you can get for free then this is definitely worth it definitely definitely worth it and there's always trees falling down so if you can get yourself a chainsaw and get your husband out or your partner out to go and chop up a couple of trees I'm sure people in your neighborhood who you know who want things cut down would be happy to give you the wood for free so yeah so that wasn't what I came on for what I've come on today but I just thought I'd share that with you and let you know how the stove's going but uh, what I thought I'd come on and share with you today is um, switching things which I suppose it went along with it because I've switched from having oil in the kitchen here which was taken out before we moved in to go into burning on wood to reduce my electricity consumption so I suppose you could say that that kind of ties into what I want to talk about today but uh, what I want to talk about today is switching things out from the uh, named brand options to uh, cheaper options now I've been trying to do this for a long time now and I always now go for the supermarket's own brand stuff it's a bit of a mouthful that excuse me but uh, today I thought I would come on and just share with you a couple of things that you can switch out that um, you can change and use own brand stuff and it's still just as good quality in fact you know what I think it's probably even made on the same conveyor belt and um, they just package it in a different packet like tins of beans I'm sure it's the same company as producing the beans and uh, they just go in a different tin with a different label on so that is one of the things you can do is switch from beans because the Heinz beans that I was buying I was buying the um, six tins of Heinz baked beans and when I was buying them they were about three pound for six or you could get like a double they were doing offers where you could get 12 tins for like five pounds or something well, I went in my co-op recently and six tins of beans is now £5.75 and the best offer I can find on them was £9.50 for 12 tins of beans. Now, I think that is, a, that is disgusting when, like last year before the Ukraine war, I was buying 12 tins of beans for a fiver or six quid and I, I just think that amount of money for the same tin of beans for... The same packaging, it's probably been in their warehouse for that length of time since last year and they're still charging that amount for beans. So I went to the supermarket and in my co-op I can get beans for 32p a tin. Um, I can get them in little for 22p a tin. I might do a beans comparison at some point and show you the different tins so that you can then go and have a look and see what you can buy. Last week I bought Branston beans and they were 2 99 for six, so I got two lots. I think they had an offer on and they were £5.50 for 12, so I got two lots of them. I'm going to go back and get some this week. And um, what else can you get? You can get some in Tesco's, I think, and they were about 40p a tin or 30p a tin. But most supermarkets do do a lower level brand of uh, beans. So rather than spending, I mean, six it's like a pound a tin for a tin of beans and i know that when you buy a single tin of beans they're like one pound fifty a tin well that is just disgusting really for a tin of beans 
When like for a family of four, you're going to need maybe two tins of beans to serve a family of grown adults, a family of four. That's like three pounds to feed four people for just beans before you've even put anything with it. So, excuse me, I'm going to take my glasses off. So, yeah, I just think that if you can switch down and find something that's a lot cheaper. I mean, if I go to Lidl and I buy a tin of beans for, say, 30p a tin, I normally I'd be paying £1.50 a tin. That's like a £1.20 saving just on one tin of beans. So it's definitely worth it. It's definitely worth having a look. The other thing I was thinking of was uh, things like chickpeas, which we in our house eat a lot. Now these were 33 pence a tin and in Tesco's for the Napoleone ones they are £1.25 a tin. For their own brand in Tesco's they are 85p a tin and these were from Lidl and again they're 33 pence a tin. Now even better if you can cook, like I can cook dried food on here and these are drained weight 240 grams so if I buy a bag of dried chickpeas there's a kilogram in them and they're about a pound a bag so you're still cheaper if you can do dried but for a tin of chickpeas for 33p you could feed a family of four with a chickpea curry or you can make chickpea burgers you could make hummus you make so many things from chickpeas that are a really uh, good thing to use. I mean, if you're somebody on your own, you could maybe use a quarter of the tin to make some hummus and put some lemon juice with it. Um, and a little bit of tahini, if you've got any, or peanut butter. If you haven't, it doesn't matter. Um, and then put that with some crackers or some vegetables and serve that for your lunch. And then you could make up a curry or some burgers with what's left in the tin and serve that with some handmade chips or on a bun um, on its own with a bit of salad. So it's a really good cheap option. It's something you could make two meals from and uh, you could have that throughout the one day and then just have some porridge or something for your breakfast. So yeah, I might do something about that at some point and um, yeah, I'll see what, what we can do for a day uh, or for a week and how much it's going to cost me to buy just the normal things that I would buy and what you can make from them and how many meals you can get from them. So that's chickpeas. The other thing I was thinking about was tea. Now I like these. These are from Lidl and when I bought these they were about 49p but um, when I went the other week these ones were 79p. And I've got this one which is a lavender, which is really nice. It's got a really lovely flavour. You can drink it any time, really. It's uh, chamomile, lemon balm and lavender. It is more of a um, tea for of an evening before you go to bed. And I find I sleep really well when I drink this tea. And that was about 79p. And then you've got your 100% chamomile tea as well. Sorry, the focus isn't very good, is it? There we go, chamomile tea. So these ones were 79p a box and you get 40, I think it's 40 tea bags. Yeah, 40 tea bags. Now if I was to buy these in Twinings or Pucker Tea, I think they'd be about £3. £2.50, £3, something like that for a packet. So again, just switching that out. If these are 79p and say the other ones are... £2.50, say £3, then that's a saving of £2.20. So we're doing really well so far. Say £2.20 on that, say a pound on the chickpeas, and then £1.20 on the beans. So just switching out your tea, your chickpeas, and your beans, you've got a saving of £4.40. That is a lot of money. I didn't realise. I've just jigged that up now, tallied that up. That is a saving of £4.50 just on three products that you would normally buy. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. They're really nice. It's really nice tea. And I just put the tea bags in the compost heap and they just rot down once they're finished with them. So, so that's that. The other thing, I hope you're all getting a lot out of this. I hope you're enjoying this. The other thing I was thinking of, excuse the noise for a minute, is packet saucers. Now, I use these a lot. 
I have been and bought new ones, so I have got some packets. I've got these Coleman's Chicken Chasseur. Now, I only bought these because they were doing four for £2. So it made them 50p a pack. Now, I can do a casserole for two with a pack of this. It says it serves four, but we like a lot of gravy on our house. And once you've put uh, vegetables and things like that with it, and you cooked it in the slow cooker, I think it just... Um, dries out a little bit so I tend to use a whole packet of this you could use just half if it's two, if it's for two and if there's more you could use a whole pack and uh, mix in some corn flour in with it to thicken it up a little bit more because once you've got the juices off your chicken um, it will add more liquid to it so you may find you need to add a bit more corn flour but you can make it stretch out a lot further by buying a box of corn flour 89p in little you mix it with a bit of water pop it in with your stock and uh, you can make it go a bit further so if you've got six seven eight people you're cooking for just add a bit of corn flour and you still get all the spices and still get all the seasoning so I've got this one which was uh, 50p it's normally a pound a packet or 85p a packet but I also buy these this one's a shepherd's pie mix which I got from the co-op and these ones are 33 pence a packet and it says it serves four so that's a shepherd's pie I've got these ones which I got in little which are 39p or 30p and that's a sausage casserole and I've also got a shepherd's pie in that as well now you do have to be a bit more careful with the salt because they can tend to be a bit more salt and just check the ingredients if you've got allergies but oddly enough this chicken one is vegan so if you're vegan out there you can still buy Coleman's and it's vegan if you want to when they're on offer um, but these ones aren't because they says they may contain egg but these ones were from little about 35p 30p something like that and then I've got this old sorry for itself Coleman's oh which is July last year but I still use it but that's a shepherd's pie it was obviously one that I bought because I only buy the Coleman's when they are on offer and as I say they were on offer in my local co-op I think it was for four for two pounds so that was them the other ones you can get as well we, the only reason I'm showing co-op is because that's what we have locally um, one thing that I do like is tuna pasta bake mix it's so much cheaper than um, this one I make this quite a lot in our house. It's a really good, cheap, versatile meal. You need one packet of this, so that'll be 50p. Uh, pasta, which you can get for about 25p in the uh, Tesco's. And um, a tin of tuna, which I'm finding at the moment for about 50p a tin in little. And one of these. So you could feed four people with one tin of tuna, a bag of pasta, a t packet of this, and it'll cost you about £1.20. So that's a really good way of doing it. Unless you can find this tuna pasta bake mix uh, cheaper somewhere else. But it's a really nice mix. It's got a lot of flavour. And um, it's unfortunately it's not vegan. Um, because it's got milk in it. So yeah, it's, it's a really nice, nice mix. But then I found these in my local co-op. And this is a macaroni cheese. Now we had this last week. And it was absolutely delicious. All I did was I added some macaroni pasta, which you can get a gluten-free macaroni pasta if you want it wheat-free. And I added um, some cauliflower because cauliflower cheese is really tasty as well. So I put that with some cauliflower, put this seasoning over the top, a little bit of cheese on the top and we had a lovely meal. Um, now next time I make it, I'm not going to put the cheese on because I want to cut out cheese again. And this packet was 33p. The cauliflower I already had in the fridge, but half a cauliflower at the moment is probably about 50 pence. And uh, the pasta 20p, so again, probably a pound to feed four people. So yeah, that's a really good one to, to buy if you want a nice cheap meal. Cheese sauce mix, 33p in co-op. I'm sure you could find it in Tesco's or Morrison's or somewhere like that. I've also got a fish pie mix, which is probably part of a pack of four that I bought and again 50p it says it's vegan 
So you could make a um, vegetable pie instead of a fish pie. And um, yeah, just put mashed potato on the top like it's got in the picture. So that's that. And I also found these, and these run off, I've already used two. They were the Schwartz. And it's a slow cooker chicken curry. So I can do that in my stove here. You could do it in a slow cooker, as it says. And uh, you could make a chicken curry and serve that with rice. And that, again, well, it serves for ready in up to eight hours. Uh, I've made a curry with it without having it in the slow cooker or in the stove. I just made it in my big um, Dutch oven and put it on the top here. I made a chicken curry last week and it was really, really nice. Um, it does say, is it vegan? A lot of these sauces tend to be vegan. Let me see. It's useful for vegetarians. So if that's handy, if you don't want to use it as chicken curry, you can make a chickpea curry with it or um, a lentil curry. Or a falafel curry and put falafels in it, like meatball-y type things. So that would be really nice. So again, 50p and then you've just got your ingredients to add to it and some rice. So that's really good. So they're my sauces. I just thought I'd show you them. Show you the alternatives that you can get between um, shop boss and uh, own brands and named brands. And then the last one we've got, excuse me, I knocked the tripod then, didn't I? The sun's gone in, typical. The last one I've got is um, coffee, which is my favourite drink, as you can see. I always have one on the stove. It's been here for a while. I can have a cup of coffee on there all day, you know. Great. Right, coffee. I've been looking around for different types of coffee because I drink about two or three cups a day. I know I shouldn't, but I do. But it's only decaf, it's not caffeinated coffee. So I can kind of, if you say there's a third of the amount of caffeine in um, a decaf, then I only have one cup of coffee. But I spread it out and have three cups a day. Now, I was buying this, and again, this is from the co-op. And it went up from about £2 a pack when I first saw it to £4.50. So this is one I bought ages ago now. I think it's about six months ago. And it's not really that nice either. But I don't want to have to rebuy it and spend that amount of money. So I was looking along through the supermarkets and um, the named brand stuff, the Costa was working out about £4.50 a bag and they don't do decaf and I quite like a Costa coffee, it's a nice coffee um, and I was looking at all the other brands and you get those little Tassimo things, that are little pods which aren't environmentally friendly at all, no matter what they say um, and I was looking at the bagged stuff and there was about five, six pound a bag for a bag of decaf coffee and the price is just going up and up and I was thinking oh, I'm going to have to give up coffee and I don't want to give up coffee because I like coffee. It keeps me going, gives me some energy. And uh, I went into Lidl and I discovered some beautiful coffee. It's really nice. I drink it all the time. Um, and it was £1.50 a bag. And it's a really big bag. I found this one. It's a decaf blend. Strength 4. It's vegan. It's 227 grams in the bag, which is the same size as that one. Now that one has gone up to £4.50. And uh, this one was about £1.50, I think. And it's lovely. It's a really, really nice coffee. I drink it every day. Um, it smells beautiful. It makes you feel like you're in um, a coffee shop. And it is also made, I've got the sustainable uh, rainforest logo on it there as well. So it's a sustainable coffee and uh, yeah it's just really really nice you can use it in um, an espresso maker which is what I make it in my espresso pot uh, it's a filter machine a hand filter and a French press coffee so it's got the little logos on the inside if I can show you there you go you see that just about there you go and I make it in my espresso pot, which I got from the charity shop for two quid. So, yeah, it's a lovely coffee. I have the kettle on as well, and that keeps the water hot all day. 
um, and then I can just add water to the coffee um, and make it a big cup of coffee. So that's a really nice coffee. So just switching that out, if this is £1.50 and the uh, named brands are £6, I mean even just this one here being £4.50, um, I've saved myself three or four pounds. So if we add that to our total of what we've saved, just changing out our sauces, um, our tea, our tins, our coffee, we've probably saved ourselves about ten pounds just from those four or five items. So it's definitely worth shopping around. It's definitely worth having a look to see if you can find um, replacements that are good. Um, you may have to taste a few, excuse me, my hair is getting on my nerves. You may have to taste a few different um, things before you find a brand that you like. But uh, I find ones that have a lot of sugar in, I can't eat, um, or things with more salt in. So do check the ingredients on the back and check and see if it's a high salt or a high sugar content. Um, I try to avoid high fructose HFC, high fructose corn syrup or glucose syrup. Um, those things are highly processed and highly dangerous, carcinogenic. So I do try to avoid things. Cheaper brands tend to load them with those things. So it's worth checking the ingredients on the label on the back and just making sure they're not loaded with um, the HFC, high fructose corn syrup and glucose syrup just to make sure that you're not having a lot of added sugar that you don't need. So I think the best one I found was the co-op. That hardly had anything in it. And they were really tasty as well, and I think they were 32p. So, yeah, definitely worth shopping around. Those sauces, they're all tasty, they're all good. But just check the salt content if you're trying to watch your cholesterol and things like that. So, so I think that was it for that part that I wanted to say. Um, can't think of anything else. I will try and do some videos and show you the different brands so you know what you're looking out for. Um, especially in the tin stuff because there's so much difference um, in the tins but there's no difference in what's in them but there's a difference in the price so I don't know I really don't know but uh, I like those little uh, chickpeas I buy their lentils little incidentally where I live don't sell dried pulses anymore for some reason they stop selling rice they've stopped selling lentils stop selling chickpeas so I can't get them in dried form in my local little. Whether they'll get them back again, I don't know. But they just said they'd stop selling them. They weren't selling them anymore. So, yeah. Stupid thing, really, to stop selling them when people are buying them. But there you go. Anyway. The next thing I wanted to share with you today was I've been rummaging through my suitcases looking for fabric under the stairs for my dresses that I was wanting to make. And uh, I came across these two things. Now, it was the front of a jumper that I was going to start years ago. And it's 100% cotton. So, what I've thought is, I've sold the wool for this now. So, I haven't even got enough wool to finish the cardigan. But, uh, what I thought was, it's such a pretty pattern. But I thought that I would cut it along there. And then cast off the stitches properly. I make it into fancy dishcloths because it is cotton. Um, I've got enough for making probably one, two, three. I'll get four dishcloths out of that piece and probably three out of that piece. So I think I'll cut them. No, I'll probably get two out of that piece, I think. This one. So I think I'll cut them and then cast off the stitches properly. And uh, make them into nice, neat dishcloths. So that's really nice. So that's another thing you can do. I could unravel them, but do you know what? I can't be bothered unraveling and then re -knitting. again. My life's too short. And I've got too much else to do. I mean, the sun's out and I need to be getting outside, really. So, yeah. So that's, me. that's what I'm going to do with that. As I say, you could recycle the yarn and knit it into something else. You could knit it into a hat or some mittens or probably enough there for... Um, a strapless top actually hmm. do you know what I think I might knit it into a strapless top instead salvage the wool I'll have a think about that but anyway it seems a waste to just have it languishing under the stairs so I think I'm going to knit it up into something else 
no dishcloths. <laughs> There's enough wool there to knit it up into um, a top, a strapless top, a strappy top for the summer. That's a good idea. So yeah, either way, it's going to get undone. So I'm going to recycle the yarn off that. So it's just good to be able to recycle things into something else and not waste the money. There's probably two balls in each piece of this and I think I may have one stray ball somewhere in the house. So in my stash. Every knitter's got a stash, doesn't matter who you are. Well, there's quite a bit left on this ball as well. So anyway, I think that's it for today. I've talked myself out of dishcloths and tucked myself into a knitted top instead. <laughs> Um, what else was I going to say? If you're interested in handmade, handcrafted stuff, I do have another channel uh, called Faithful You Knitting Podcast. I do a lot of things on there. I do weaving, I do knitting, I do spinning, I do hand dyeing with plants. Um, I do crochet. I do a lot of handmade stuff. And uh, if you're interested in all that, it's on my other channel. Um, at the moment, I'm knitting a jumper. I showed that on one of my uh, vlogs on here the other day. Um, and I think that's it for today so um, oh the other thing I wanted to share oh no I'll do that next time well I've nothing to talk about next time if I do everything today will we but uh, it was just about cooking more efficiently tell you what do you want me to do that now where's the book before we go I've been making my way through this book make do and mend highly recommend it it was about four three or four about three pound I think on eBay and it was a new book it's all these different leaflets from the wartime and today I'm up to saving fuel ways of saving fuel there you go so this will be my last promise my last bit for today food and fuel planning it says to plan ahead what you're going to make and uh, it says a tiered steamer is the I'll tell you what she'll put my glasses back on oh tell you I haven't had my coffee today. A tiered steamer is the best answer to the problem. With a little ingenuity you can cook a whole meal, steak, pudding, uh, vegetables and a sweet over one ring. Over one ring, excuse me. If you haven't a steamer, improvise with a colander, fit it into the saucepan and fish can be cooked between two plates placed on the top. Very useful. And then it says Fuel's more precious than jewels. Don't drown your vegetables. I don't do this, but I know somebody who does. Cooks their vegetables in far too much water. They go all soggy, all bitter, and uh, not very tasty. Um, don't drown your vegetables. In other words, don't use more water than necessary. This is responsible for a big waste of fuel and the loss of valuable items, which it is. Because when you're cooking and you're trying to heat the water first, you're using all that energy to heat the water. It's far better to steam. You put a little bit of water in a pan. You don't even need a steamer to do it. A little bit of water about a centimetre deep in the bottom of the pan. Put your vegetables in. Pop a lid on the top. Cook it until all the water's gone and your vegetables will be cooked. You don't need an awful lot of water. You don't need to have the pan full of water to be able to cook most vegetables. The only thing I would say you need water for properly is potatoes. And even then, don't use a lot of water because when you put your potatoes in, it pushes the water up in the pan. So you don't need a lot of water in them anyway. Um, it says it's a big waste of fuel and the loss of valuable vitamins because all the vitamins and everything you want are then going into the water. Whereas if it's steamed or done in a small amount of water in a pan, you get all the vitamins and uh, the water doesn't because when you throw the water away you throw it all down the, down the, the sink the size of a large whole cabbage or cauliflower just wallowing in boiling water should not be seen in any kitchen remember that the more water you boil the more fuel you are burning shred the cabbages break cauliflowers into sprigs slice root vegetables into small pieces and then try cooking them the quick way in the minimum quantity of water also says keep the lids on your saucepans instead of all the steam going all over the place it says this is the most important it takes 15 percent less gas to bring food to the boil in covered in a covered pan so the extra care is worthwhile don't you think now in this day and age i think so 
So use the minimum amount of water, put your lids on your pans and you'll save yourself a lot of money because you won't be taking extra time to heat the water, heat the pan and cook the food because with the lid on the pan it makes it like its own little oven and it cooks a lot quicker. So yeah, I won't do any more of that today but this book I highly recommend. I've had so much useful information out of it. It's been brilliant. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for today. I'm going to go. I'm going to love you and leave you. It's been quite a long video today. Thank you if you stuck with me till the end. And uh, I will see you next time. You can tell I haven't talked to you for a while, can't you? If this is your first time here, do like and subscribe. Do hit the notification bell and click the all option. And it'll let you know when I upload new videos. And uh, come along for the journey and the ride of my cottage diary, living in Wales. So I'll see you soon. Take care for now and uh, have a good week. So bye for now. Bye bye.